I am the woodpecker today. I will show you how I did those two cremation urns. I built those two urns because my mother asked me to build cremation urns for my mom and dad. Some people find it creepy, others find it's a good idea. Take your pick. For myself, I'd rather build them while they are still healthy. Because if I wait after they die, I'll have too many tears in my eyes and I could cut off my fingers. I did a virtual version of it to see if my design was pleasing to the eye. I searched the internet to find the appropriate volume for a hern. I found that one cubic inch is equal to one pound of a person. So I designed a box of seven inches by nine inches by seven inches high for an interior volume of 288 cubic inches. There's plenty of space. Everything started with department store painted countertops. My wife stripped them all. There's nothing like five or six coats of lead paint to hide the beauty of the mahogany. I measured to see if I have enough scrap pieces for both urns. I put rough marks on the wood. Here we can see the marks, the damaged edges, and the remaining paint that I will cut off. For the panels, I split a smaller board in two. For your information, because it's difficult to see, I'm pushing the board with a scrap piece of wood, not with my hands. Here we can see both halves of the board. We still have a screw hole from the countertop. It's now time to pass the boards in the thickness planner. I need a uniform quarter inch on both boards. It's time to cut the rail and style. I cut a piece to rough length, a little bit more than I need. Then I resaw all the boards at one inch, enough to make eight frames. I need to cut them to the right leg. Now that all the pieces are sorted and cut, I just need to do the stub tenon on the rail. But before that, I have to make a sled to hold those small pieces. I change the bit for a groove bit, and I pass all the pieces for the frames through it. My tenons are too tight, I have to sand them a little. Here we can see all the frames dried assembled. Then I pass all the styles on a lock miter bit. It's very difficult to adjust this bit. The center of the bit must be in the center of the piece. And the fence must be back half the thickness of the piece. The frames are holding by friction when they go through the bit. It's easier to hold and my fingers are far from the bit. The two boxes without their center panel. Speaking of panel, it's time to cut them. I cut them 7 16th, shorter than the space measured from the inside of the frame's groove. Then I sand both faces with a 120 grit sandpaper. I change for the 180 grit and finish with the 220 grit. Now it's time for the intarsia. After choosing my wood species, I cut their form from a piece of paper. I stick two pieces of wood together with double stick tape. I spray adhesive on the cut piece of paper to finally stick it on a piece of wood, which is covered by a piece of MacTac. You can see all the wood pieces with their patterns stuck to them. Now, all the pieces need to be cut on the scroll saw. To avoid mistakes, all the pieces are put back on the pattern after they are being cut. The pieces are all cut and ready to be shaped. I start to send them with a Dremel and a flexible shaft. When all the pieces have the correct shape, I polish them with a 400 grit sandpaper on a pneumatic drum. Then I place all the finished pieces on the quarter inch thick panel and center the design. 
When I'm happy with all the position of all the pieces, I remove one piece at a time and glue it back to the same spot. I repeat this until all the pieces are glued in place. After, I weigh down all the pieces with a bag of sand and a concrete block on top of it. I let everything dry overnight. While the glue dries, I cut the pieces for the top and bottom of the urns. On my crosscut sled, I cut four pieces of 10 inches by 8 inches. After, I pass them through the drum sander to remove all the marks and paint. I mark all the corners with a quarter, then I send all the corners to the line. After, I round over all the edges of the top and bottom. Then, I send all the faces of those four boards, like the quarter inch panel. The next day, I take a sneak peek of what the entire sea will look like inside of their frames. I really like it. They will be outstanding urns. Before gluing the panels inside their frames, I remove the dust with the air compressor and with wood alcohol. Before putting the panels in their frames, I put several coats of clear shellac on them. I'm choosing shellac because I want a traditional look. On the panels with intarsia, I apply the shellac with an artist brush, taking particular care to put shellac in all the nooks and crannies. It's a brand new look with finish on. Before putting the panels inside the frames, I send them with an abrasive pad to remove all the little bumps on the finish. It's easier now to send the interior of the rails and style. Inside each groove, I put rubber barrels to center the panels. They will absorb the wood movement. I glue the stub tenon to the style, taking care not to put glue on the panels. After checking for squareness, I just let the glue dry. I don't have enough clamps, so I use my workbench to clamp some panels. I need to put grooves inside the top and bottom rail for the cabinet maker's buttons, which will hold the tops and bottoms of the urns. On the larger frame, there are two grooves. Before gluing the frames together, I sand the interior. It's now time to glue the frames together. Each corner fits inside the other. I wish that in real life I would be able to put clamps at that speed. The urns begin to take form and need more times to dry. Now it's the ideal time to make the buttons. I just cut a rabbit on the edge of a piece of wood. Then I cut them at one inch and a half from the rabbit. Then I rip several pieces from it. They will become my buttons. I drill holes in the center of each one for a screw. I remove the clamps and I'm unhappy with the corners. They have a little gap. I glue a small strip of mahogany inside them. When it's dry, I cut them with a knife and sand them flush with the frame. I sand the box on a glass plate so all the panels are equal. Then, I round over all the styles of the two boxes. I find where I will put the buttons and I pre-drill for the screws. On the top, I drill the holes with the hand drill, taking care not to go through the board. On the base, I drill through the board. Then I make a chamfer on the exterior side of the base. I change the chamfer bit for an 1164 inch bit. This will allow a number 8 screw to be loose in the hole. After that, all the buttons are screwed in their holes. I'll try my concept. It's working. When I tighten the screw, the button gets stuck in the groove. The base will hold the frames that way. This will allow some expansion to the base and can be screwed from the exterior. I chamfer the edge of the buttons so they won't have any sharp edges. It's now time to make the legs for the base. I use a core box bit to put a dome shape on a piece of mahogany. 
I rip it to the right thickness and the right width. Now with the scroll saw, I cut a shape on the leg. Then I put my angle adjustable fence on my sled and set it to 45 degrees and cut them. After all the pieces are cut, I glue all the pieces together at their 45 degree cut. I put hand pressure on them for a while. Then I let them dry. When they are dry enough, I sand the curve and I sand them straight on a piece of sandpaper. I finally glue them to the base. I put some cement block as clamping pressure. I sand the base straight on a glass plate. It's time to send all the parts that need sending. I'm still not satisfied with my corners. I mix wood alcohol, shellac, and mahogany dust that I kept. My mixture is too runny. I pour a small quantity in a little cup, and I add some dust to it. Then I rub the paste inside the corner crack. When it's dry, I give everything a good end sanding and I put several coats of shellac with a light sanding between each coat. The last coat is put with a spray gun. When everything is dry, I put the screws which hold the top. I put in the box the velvet bag that my wife has sewn, and I finish by screwing the bottom. Voila! Thank you for watching and see you next time for another episode of The Woodpecker. Mm -hmm.